Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from the YouTube channel Redolescence and first and foremost, I just wanna welcome you back to my channel. I hope this video finds you in good health. And in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the newest release by the company Tom Ford. And this one is called Beau De Jour, so stay tuned. Now, as I said previously, this is the most recent release from the house of Tom Ford. Of course, a lot of people online are still talking about Lost Cherry, which seems to be the most recent one. And I know a lot of websites online state that this is coming out in 2019, but it's still 2018 here and this is available. So Beau De Jour, the newest release from the company, it is an aromatic fougere, which of course means that it's going to include notes like lavender, geranium, bergamot, and some mossy ingredients underneath it all. Now, in terms of the name, of course, this is is a nod to France, France being the perfume capital of the world, namely Grasse in France. Beau de Jour literally translates to handsome of the day. So it's kind of like if you walk into a restaurant, you order the soup de jour, you're ordering the soup of the day. Beau is a masculine term that is used to describe a man, of course, and it means handsome. The female counterpart to that would be belle. So belle du jour, beautiful of the day. This is handsome of the day. However, handsome is an adjective, so we need a noun in order for it to make sense on a literal level. So beau is actually an old French term that can also mean boyfriend. So beau du jour could also mean boyfriend of the day. So funny enough, especially considering Tom Ford's latest marketing strategy, it doesn't surprise me too much if that were the intention behind the naming of this fragrance for it to mean boyfriend of the day and of course this is a masculine composition it definitely harkens back to some of the older fragrances on the market because it does convey that sort of old school barbershop vibe i'm actually really excited to tell you more about the smell but let's go ahead and take a very quick look at the presentation so the presentation for Beau De Jour is quite similar to other Tom Ford private blends. Of course, the box opens up like so, and it has a podium on the inside in which the bottle rests. Very nice attention to detail. Uh, black bottle, gold label, Tom Ford at the top, reflective plaque, sticker at the bottom with your information if you want to validate your purchase. The cap does not click into place, but it is a snug fit. You can pick this one up from the cap. Distribution on the atomizer is nice and wide. Let's continue with the smell. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, you are going to get a lot of lavender. Now, lavender is, of course, an ingredient that compromises a lot of barbershop fragrances. And so when you think about some of the old school classics, I know some of my favorites are like Penhaligon Sartorial. Another one that, believe it or not, this one has gotten compared to online is Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent. And I can totally see that comparison, the one that's available in the aluminum can, or at least it used to be. I get a lot of lavender in here. If you're a fan of lavender, chances are you're gonna fall head over heels in love with this one. It has a lavender akin to like Caron Porunome, the one that's in the green bottle. It's not as lavender-y as Lavender Palm, also by Tom Ford, which unfortunately is a discontinued fragrance now. This one is compounded by notes like oak moss, and there's patchouli in here, there's bergamot, there's geranium. There's a lot else going on in here to sort of shape this fragrance into what it's come to be known as today. I think for somebody who is into some of the more natural and organic smelling lavender fragrances on the market, Sunshine Man by Amouage being another one, you're gonna love this one. But if you're not a fan of lavender, because I know it's typically associated, and I hate to say this, but a lot of people associate it with some cleaning products for some reason, then you might want to stay away from this one. But depending on how it's going to cater with your personal taste and scent is subjective at the end of the day, so definitely you be your own judge, give it a try for yourself, you might actually like it. Going back to some of the comparisons that I was talking about before, yes, people did compare this one to a lot of other sort of fougere scents that were popular back in the day. The one thing that really made me sort of uh, enjoy wearing this one the few times that I did is it reminded me a little bit of P Penhaligon Sartorial which is a very popular scent people sing high praise for it it's composed by my favorite perfumer Bertrand Duchafort and just making that comparison of that subtle association this one isn't as powdery but I started to like it a lot more and then uh, at one point it started to get quite green and in the dry down it almost has like this hippie-esque patchouli 
patchouli note in there that I kind of like, but I don't like. So it's kind of like a guilty pleasure for me, if I could say that. And then it started to remind me of another sort of classic masculine fragrance that for some reason I've been wearing uh, this year a lot. And I think it was like the only bottle that was at my house as opposed to my mother's house where I keep all of my fragrances. And that fragrance is Zeno by Davidoff. And so I kept smelling this one and I'm like, it smells a lot like Zeno. And so it does sort of convey those 80s powerhouse fragrances. And so there's something about this scent that definitely has this sort of dressed up, masculine, mature, feel to the composition. I wouldn't go as far as saying it smells dated because I don't think it's overly green. I think had there been more oak moss or had there been a more pronounced green undertone or undercurrent, then yeah, I would have been a little bit more inclined to call this a dated scent. But I think there's enough of that contemporary feel from the geranium and the other accent notes that are utilized in here quite creatively um, to sort of convey this sort of dressed up, masculine, refined, and elegant composition. It definitely conveys a sort of maturity with it. So this is something that I would recommend for somebody who's perhaps a little bit older, a little bit more mature, who's very confident in themselves, maybe well-established, somebody who probably works in an office setting and you wanna give a good impression, you're always dressed up with either a suit and tie or just a shirt and tie, uh, semi-formal. It definitely gives off that vibe. So basically, overall, what you're gonna get is it opens up with a little bit of citrus in there. I do get namely bergamot from this one. It is short-lived. It's gonna last in there for like five, 10 minutes and then it quickly dissipates. And then it's going to transition into this lavender, heavy fragrance with this slightly minty mid-tone on account of the geranium before settling into this green base, which by the way, yes, you can smell the green elements from the beginning of this fragrance's progression, but of course they become a lot more transparent as it sort of starts to dry down. And then in the base, you have some smooth resins. Now, I don't know exactly what's utilized in here. I know there's one resin that I would say kind of produces that effect and I've smelled it in a few other fragrances, Beloved Man by Amor being one of them and it's Elemi resin and I smell just as very smooth but not creamy dry down. I think it's a very well pieced together scent. In terms of a lavender heavy concoction, I would probably recommend something like A Taste of Heaven by Killian. Also, Lavender Palm was in that same family. So if you are familiar with the now discontinued Lavender Palm, the lavender in this one is not as strong as that one. And so if you're expecting something on the same level, or if you're thinking that this might be a solid purchase for those who wanted to pick up Lavender Palm but didn't, and you want something comparable. This one, the lavender in here is not as strong. This is a lot more about the green nuances once it starts to dry down, but yes, the lavender does have a very strong presence about it. All in all, I think it's a solid release from the house of Tom Ford, even comparing it to the other Tom Ford fragrances that I've acquired throughout the years. Uh, this one actually doesn't smell similar to any of them, and I know in terms of it being a fougere scent, because that is the official cl uh, classification for it, in terms of it being a fougere scent, it doesn't smell like fougere platine or fougere d'ardent. It smells quite different. It definitely goes in a different direction and I kind of like it. I like the marketing. I like the name. I like the smell, but I do think that this is one that's geared for somebody who's a little bit older, a little bit more set in their ways and it's kind of mature. So definitely let yourself be your judge. Go out there, try it for yourself, report back here and let me know what you think of it. Let's go ahead and finish off the video with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I do think that this fragrance is unique in the regard that, like I said before, it doesn't smell like any other private blend that I have in my collection. And so for that reason, it definitely stands apart, but it does sort of harken back to some of the older Fougere powerhouse type fragrances that were around in the 80s and perhaps late 70s as well. I personally connected it to Zeno by Davidoff. Some people online have connected it to uh, Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent. There's even one or two people online that I said it smells like Old Spice. All right, now I don't get the Old Spice comparison, and yes, I do have several bottles of Old Spice in my collection, and I grew up being around my grandfather, who was really the father figure in my life, and he wore a lot of Old Spice and brewed and stuff like that, and no, I don't think it smells like Old Spice, but I do get that older sort of 
oak moss, mossy green, almost Sheepra at times feel. And I think it's really interesting, but definitely something geared towards somebody who's a bit older, a bit more mature. In terms of the longevity on this one, no slouch. It is eau de parfum concentration. I got eight to nine hours from it, which is excellent. Projection on this one was kind of soft. And I think that's because the citrus uh, fruits that are in here are short lived. And they're the ones that are really contributing to the volatility. So the projection on this one was like two hours of like really steady projection. And then it sat very close to the skin. So this is one where you might want to reapply throughout the day. I know it's $230 for a 50 ml. So this one is on the pricey side, unfortunately. But if you love the smell, um, only you can decide if you think it's a worthy enough purchase. So and I think for a lot of people, they will be in love, maybe even from a nostalgic standpoint, they will be in love with this scent. In terms of the versatility of this one, I do find this one to be a pretty versatile scent. I think this one could work all season long, especially if you're in a climate controlled environment. Like I said, if you're going to be in the office, if you're going to be wearing this uh, in the company or in the vicinity of a, a lot of other people, and you want to give off the best impression of yourself, just somebody very well groomed, well tailored, this is definitely a fragrance to fit that bill. In terms of seasons, I think you can wear this one all year round, but in terms of age range, it's geared towards somebody who's a little bit older. And yes, in terms of the name, but also in terms of the ingredients and the classification, the overall vibe that it gives off, I do think this one would work a bit better on a guy, although I think it's marketed as a unisex release. But again, these are just recommendations. Wear what you like, wear what makes you happy. And in terms of the presentation, uh, very similar to the other uh, Tom Ford private blends. The only different thing that I have to keep in mind or for consideration is the name, which I think is kind of quirky and it definitely goes along with the more recent uh, Tom Ford releases and how He's kind of doing things in a more daring direction, more artistic, creative direction. And my final verdict on this one is I think it's a solid scent. And I think a lot of people would probably give this one a four out of five. My personal rating for this one, even though I don't really do ratings on my channel anymore, if I had to put a number on it, which I hate doing now, uh, but I would probably give it like a three out of five. I can see the value in it and I can see what people would like about it. And I think that if you're a fan of this genre of fragrance, you're gonna love this one. And I said this in a, a previous review of mine as well uh, in regards to a soapy fragrance. And I said, if that's your style, then you're really gonna like it. And so, you know, there's always different types of people, different tastes, different sentiments. And so if it caters to yours, then that's awesome. For me on a personal level, I would go with some of the other more contemporary releases from the house of Tom Ford, maybe Mandarino di Amalfi, Costa Azzurra, or I would go with Neroli Portofino, but not even the blue collection. I love Tuscan leather. I love tobacco vanille. I love oud wood. I love Noir de Noir. And so these are staples that I've had in my collection for many, many years. And if and when the bottles do run out, I will replenish. But this is something that is geared towards somebody who's a bit older. This time of the year though, I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm gonna be wearing a lot of Vert and Sans. That is such a fantastic scent with the pine resin note that's in there, the creaminess. It's so good, it's heavenly guys. So in any case, thank you so much for tuning in. That was my take, those were my thoughts on the newest Tom Ford release, Beau Du Jour. Not one that really resonated with me in terms of the fact that it is a little bit more geared towards somebody who's a little bit older, but nonetheless, definitely go out there, try it for yourself. You might absolutely love it. If you own or have tried this scent, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel. If you did take something of value from this video, I would really appreciate your subscription. All you have to do is click the red subscribe button down there. This way, whenever I do upload new videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future fragrance related content. And that includes fragrance reviews just like this one, giveaways, unboxing, special guests, interviews, and a whole lot of other fragrance-related content. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys. We'll see you very soon. Bye.